Welcome to the Momsiety Club podcast. I'm your host, Tori Levine, and I like to think that I can keep calm in a difficult situation based on my background working in a psych hospital. But when I had kids, I was constantly questioning if I was doing things right or how I was messing them up this time. Add in a child with a chronic illness and I found myself full of anxiety. Momsiety is a real thing for every new parent, and when you add in a chronic illness, food allergy, or other challenging circumstances, it can become downright isolating. And that's why the Momsiety Club is here for you. Each week, we'll discuss all things motherhood, so join me and let's get rid of this Momsiety together. Hey mama, how are you doing? I'm going to get super vulnerable today. And to be honest, this is something that I personally posted on my social media a few months ago and had always been meaning to record this for for you, for all the mamas out there who have had, you know, difficult circumstances with their littles, health, and everything along those lines and not, and maybe feeling unable to talk to anyone about it. I felt unable for a really long time. And this happened in March of 2021. So it honestly took me five months to come to you here and talk about it because I had just been so overwhelmed and anxious and feeling the perfection monster on my shoulders about sharing my feelings with you guys. So here it is. This is a post that I had put up and I will be sharing that on the blog as well. But I, to be honest, what happened is I recorded my thoughts while I was in the shower and then wrote it all out because I just needed to get it out. So I just wanted to give you that little tip as well. Sometimes we just want to vent. We don't always have to vent to somebody else. Um, So I've been using my memo, voice memo ability on my phone a lot recently to do these things. And just the reminders again before I start is please make sure you subscribe to the podcast, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow Momsiety Club on social media, and get on our email list at join.momsietyclub.com. That way you stay updated with everything. And if you have questions, I love to hear from you. So reach out in any of those ways. All right. Here we go. Wednesday was a rough night of tears and not from the kids. Ruben, my oldest, was diagnosed May 30th, 2017, a little over three years ago. And I don't think I've ever cried over it. Anxiety attacks? Yes, I have had tons of those, but never cried. That changed Wednesday night when Doggy was eaten his little stuffed animal. I was on a planning meeting call for the Walk for Hope, which is the walk that raises money for research at the Pediatric Center for Inflammatory Bowel Disease at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, while my husband was upstairs getting the boys to bed. As I finished up on the meeting and walked to go upstairs, I saw that Zev, our puppy, had eaten Reuben's doggy stuffed animal. And now doggy was something Ruben took with him to infusions for a very long time. So it's a very sentimental uh, object. And we always had to make sure that we had doggy. And actually doggy was given to Ruben by my dad. So by his grandfather when he was a baby And just like as a gift. And I remember thinking, oh, stuffed animals, you know, kids aren't supposed to have these. Sat around for a little bit. Well, then one day there was an attachment to Doggy. Doggy sat at the table and ate breakfast. You know, he fed Doggy, everything like that. And then 
when he had to start getting procedures done, he had his doggy with him and that was his comfort object. Even if doggy just stayed in the book bag <laughs> during the, when we were out at an appointment, um, still he just like took doggy with him. And actually one year we had come home from vacation and Ruben had his scopes scheduled in Philly, but we could not find doggy. And we were, we searched high and low, like ripped everything apart because we thought we left him. I even called my dad and I said, where did you get this? Because I can't find it anywhere online. And it's his security that he takes with him and he has scopes coming up. Well, thankfully we found doggy hidden in like a weird pocket in a suitcase. So that's just our little side note, all about how uh, important doggy is. So after I came out from my meeting, I was sitting in the kitchen. I turned, I saw that Zev had eaten doggy in the living room. I walked upstairs and told Isaac, my husband, that my heart just sank to the bottom of my stomach because I found Zev had destroyed and eaten a toy. Isaac immediately knew that it was doggy. So we got the kids to bed and then just out of nowhere, I was so angry. Now I tend to snowball things and I fully admit that, but I was just so, so, so upset. It was like the end of the world to me. And that brought on a whole huge discussion discussion that really was cathartic, but also odd because three plus years after diagnosis, it was the most upset I think I had ever gotten over it. And it also, maybe because Ruben was having a bit of a flare and he's okay. And he didn't care. He's okay. He'll be okay. It's just upsetting. I think with a lot of things all coming together, it just finally hit me that this is not just a little thing. Ruben is growing up and having to deal with this. He'll deal with it for the rest of his life. I think maybe subconsciously because I hadn't remembered it until that point. Actually, that morning was while I was giving Ruben his morning med. He asked me why Eli, his little brother, doesn't have to take medicine. So that hit me. And that's going to be a challenge and will be challenging and upsetting as they grow. But I hope we can just explain it and make it as, make them both understand. But it all just hit me. And I was crying and, you know, saying like, you know, this isn't fair this is forever. This is lifelong. I mean, I've told so many people that when they've asked me if he will grow out of it, but I don't know that I ever completely grasped it. And my husband said, you know, that's the expletive part about it. That's the bad part about it, that he is young. He was diagnosed when he was two, almost three. That's what he remembers. And we always would say, like, that's, we're fortunate because he's not, like, in pain. Maybe he was in pain and he just didn't know and that was normal. And normal for him was, is going to chop every month, every month and a half and getting infusions. So... He always remembers taking medicine, traveling to Philly for doctor's appointments, and and yeah, he knows that other kids don't have infusions, and maybe maybe they take medicine or maybe they don't, but it's what he knows. So I guess that's a silver lining if I want to look at it that way, um, but it all reminds me of a story from when he was in kindergarten when his teacher said, she asked me if I could tell her a little bit more about his infusions because one of his classmates came in after getting a flu shot and Reuben said, so 
Was it a long shot or a short shot? And that's how we would explain things to him about infusions versus flu shots or vaccines um, at the doctor for a doctor's visit. And his teacher was impressed and proud. She said he was just so matter of fact about it, which is good. And that's what we can hope, that it doesn't really phase him. When Ruben was diagnosed, I was relieved that there was a diagnosis. We knew what was going on. I think I had more, way more anxiety and were like, well, yeah, anxiety and worry beforehand because I just knew there was something. There had to be something. I needed an answer and I was not happy just having the answer of it's normal. No, it's not normal. Like, so I think I would say that my husband felt the same way as well, but he also was concerned. It was something much, much worse. So there was a relief in diagnosis for him as well. And with everything going on, we are also just seeing Ruben no longer as our little guy who can handle so much, but he's growing up and this with this and he's going through everything. And I hope it continues to just be something that doesn't phase him. So this is my way of helping me talking. <laughs> I wrote about it, podcasting about it, starting a new business to help others. Uh, I mean, when there's a pandemic and you're deep in postpartum anxiety, why not start a business to manage your anxiety, right? Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, a business and a podcast. So, but recently I've been asking myself and I said it to Isaac, uh, that night, is this my story to tell? Yes. I'm sharing about my perspective, but what if Ruben doesn't want me to be sharing it? I've talked about him. I've talked to him about it a little bit before. And my husband said, well, why don't you just talk to him and ask him? And I, I did. And he said, yes, you can talk about it. You can talk about me. And just as a side note, since then, since this was a couple months ago that this happened, he, Ruben allowed me to talk about him and his chronic illness and share a picture of him to the local news dealing with COVID and masking and schools and the lack thereof. So, but it was just interesting as we were talking, my husband and I, while trying to fix this stuffed animal and sew a stuffed animal back together, how, you know, we could deal with things for years. And then this stuffed animal was destroyed and ripped apart and how much of an emotional experience that was for the two of us. And I guess since Doggy went along with Ruben as his safety blanket for a a lot of things, Doggy was also our safety blanket. It had all our emotions and things from his diagnosis through now tied up in it. And that's it. I just, I don't know how to end this. I know I needed to process it. I know I needed to share it and I had shared it in my personal page, but I wanted to share it here as well in hopes that someone may be able to feel comforted by the weirdness of all the emotions coming out over a stuffed animal being destroyed. And I just want to say when your child has a chronic illness or a disability or anything that may be a challenge So much of the focus goes to your child, but you also have to remember that you are facing a challenge as well, and it's okay to not feel okay about it, and that's why the Momsiety Club podcast is here. That's why the Momsiety Club is here, and that's why I'm here to meet with you, support you from a step or two ahead of maybe where you are to kind of be your guide because that's what I needed and I didn't have. So please reach out to me. 
email, social media at join.momsietyclub.com. I appreciate you. I'm here to support you. I'm here for you. I'm cheering you on. And if you know a mom who could be cheered on as well, who needs some cheering on, or just to hear herself in a story, share this with her. I think that's the best thing that we can do to help each other is to share our stories. I would love you to reach out and share your story with me. And again, I'd love for you to share this with others. All right, mama, let's go and we can get rid of this anxiety together. The Momsiety Club podcast is not intended to take place of medical advice or therapy. If you are in crisis, call your local emergency number or the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK. The Momsiety Club membership is full of a group of amazingly supportive moms and pre- and postnatal fitness tips and exercises to help you mentally and physically. The first month's fee for all new members this month is being donated to the Child Life Fund at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. When you're ready to join other mamas getting through the ups, downs, and anxieties of motherhood, head to join.momsietyclub.com to become a member 